For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, please visit MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. All right, so we ended the last series on the quantum mechanical model, talking about orbital energies in many electron atoms. And we asked how the orbitals are filled with electrons. That kind of brings us here to electron configurations. So electron configurations, what do they do? Well, let's think about this question first. How does the distribution of electrons in atomic orbitals of a specific element relate to the chemical and physical properties of that element? Well, before we mentioned that elements in the same group have similar properties. So for instance, the alkali metals in group 1A, they have similar properties, similar reactivity. Alkaline earth metals in group 2, similar idea, they have similar properties. Halogens, they all have similar properties. This is due to similarities in their electron configurations, which basically describe what's going on as far as the distribution of electrons in the atomic orbitals of that element or that atom. So moving forward with electron configurations, there are some things to keep in mind. The first thing is, is the number of orbitals, the number of orbitals in each subshell. So if, if you recall from the quantum mechanical model videos, we talked about how if you have an L value of zero, you have an S subshell. If you have one, that corresponds to P. An L value of two corresponds to D, and L value of three corresponds to F. And so the number of orbitals that you have in the S subshell is one, because there's only one M sub L value possible for an L value equal to zero. For P, if the L equals one, you have three possible M sub L values and three orbitals. So there are three P orbitals. In and if you have D, the D subshell, an L value equal to two, there are five possible M sub L values, which is five orbitals in the D subshell. And for F, an L value equal to three, there are seven possible M sub L values. So there's seven orbitals in the, in the F subshell. Okay. So it's also important to keep in mind the maximum number of electrons each of those subshells have. Well, if that's the number of orbitals in each of these subshells, each orbital can hold two electrons. So we just have to double these numbers of orbitals to get the maximum number of electrons in that subshell. So the S subshell can have two, P subshell can have six, D can have 10, and F can have 14. So the way we're gonna represent that when we do electron configurations is NS2, NP6, ND10, NF14. Okay, that'll be the maximum. Um, amount of electrons we can have in those subshells. Another thing we have to keep in mind is that atoms are neutral. Why is this? Well, because the number of protons equals the number of electrons. And that, of course, is going to be given by the atomic number. The atomic number is defined as the number of protons in an atom. And if it's neutral, the, positive, the amount of positive charge equals the amount of negative charge. So the number of protons equals the number of electrons. The last thing we'll have to keep in mind is how orbitals are actually filled with electrons. And that's going to be in the next video. We're going to talk about that and the alpha principle. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.